Okay, so today I have a pretty interesting integral from the Patnam. And if you don't know what the Patnam is, it's basically this uh, college Olympiad for math students in US um, universities, right? So when you look at this integral at first, um, your first thought might be to get rid of the denominator, which is x squared plus one by doing a substitution, right? So if, if you do a u substitution or a t substitution or whatever, right? You're going to multiply this whole expression by the derivative of whatever u or t you choose. So you want a t or u which has a derivative. So I'll just let this be f of x, which is equal to f of x square plus 1. Right. So just remember that the derivative of tan x is equal to sec square x. And if you remember your identities, this is basically the same thing as tan square x plus 1. And so we found a function that we should substitute in, right? So if we let x is equal to tan theta, we get dx is equal to sec square theta d theta, which since sec square theta is equal to tan square theta plus 1, is equal to tan square theta plus 1 d theta, right? So let's make this substitution on an actual integral. So this integral will be equal to the integral of, since x is equal to tan theta, the natural log of tan theta plus 1 by tan theta square plus 1. And obviously, we have to replace the dx by this whole expression. So I'm just going to substitute in tan square theta plus 1 d theta. Right. And obviously these two will cancel out. So the integral that we're left with is a lot simpler. Right. So, okay. So now what about the bounds of this integral? This original integral was from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1. And we still haven't changed what we're integrating. So it's still going to be from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, right, when x is equal to 1, we have tan theta is equal to 1. And so we have theta is equal to the tan inverse or the arctan of 1, which is equal to pi by 4, right? So our upper limit of integration should be pi by 4. For our lower limit of integration, we have 0. So we have x is equal to 0, tan theta is equal to 0, and so obviously theta is equal to 0. And so we have our simplified integral, which I'll just call i, which we have to solve for, is the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of the natural log of tan theta plus 1 d theta. So this might still look really complicated. But the easy way to do this is just remember there's this property called King's property, which basically says that if you have an integral, right, I'll just call it, it's written as King's law or property, I'll just write law, that if you have an integral from A to B of f of x dx, this is basically the same thing as the integral from A to B of f of A plus B minus x. And the reasoning is, well, just think about it, right? If we take an example, and we take the line y is equal to x. So this is y is equal to x. And we integrate from, let's say, 0 to 1, right? If this is the origin, and then this is 1, we basically just have to find this area. So what this new expression would be is the area under the curve for the graph 1 minus x. So it's just the curve which has the opposite gradient and is also translated up by one unit. So here we have what this looks like, 1. And this drawing is not to scale, but I have this. So it's basically just reversing the thing and then translating by the amount that we actually have moved it down by. So it's the same area under the curve 
And what the statement is basically saying is that it doesn't matter if you integrate from uh, left to right or right to left, because it's going to be the same area under the curve anyways. It's just horizontally flipped, right? Of course, if it was a vertical, uh, if it was a vertical flip, it would have been different. But this is basically saying that the area doesn't change after a um, horizontal flip. So this is our integral now, right? The integral from pi by four to zero of this expression. So now what we can do is remember that. So I equal to the integral from zero to pi by four, and I'll just use King's law here. So we should do pi by four plus zero. So ln of tan of pi by four plus zero um, minus theta plus one d theta, right? And this is what we have to solve for now. Well, there's another trig identity, which I, which I think is pretty important again, right? So then that's tan of pi by four minus x is equal to one minus tan x by one plus tan x, right? So once again, I'm just going to make this substitution here. So I have i is equal to the integral from zero to pi by four. And by the way, this x is just a, is just another variable here. It's not related to this integral. So I have the natural log of one minus tan x by one plus tan x plus one. Oh, actually, wait. This should be tan theta, right? So this is tan theta. This is tan theta plus one d theta, right? And now we simplified our integral to this. So let's try and add these fractions. So now we got i is equal to the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of the natural log of, if we add these fractions, we get um, 1 minus tan theta plus 1 plus tan theta by 1 plus tan theta. Again, this looks pretty complicated, but the minus tan theta and the plus tan theta cancel out. So we're left with the integral from 0 to pi by four, the natural log of two by one plus tan theta, d theta, right? And now by using the properties of logs, we know that i will be equal to the integral of zero to pi by four. And here's where it gets interesting. We can use the properties of natural logarithms. So we get the natural log of two minus the natural log of one plus tan theta d theta. Because once again, just remember that ln of a by b or of, of any base, not just base c, is equal to ln a minus ln b, right? So we've simplified our expression by this much. So what is i again, right? Let's remember i when we started, which is the integral from zero to pi by four of tan theta plus one. And guess what? We've got tan theta plus one here again. So I'm gonna re rewrite this as zero to pi by four of ln two d theta plus the integral of ln, or actually, I'm sorry, minus the integral from zero to pi by four of ln one plus tan theta, which if you recall, again, is just i, right? So we have the integral i is this, and once again, we're going to have it here, the ln of one plus tan theta. So I'm just going to write i. And now this is a pretty simple, this is a pretty simple um, algebraic expression. So if I just add i to both sides, I get two i, right, is equal to, and you can just forget about this. I'm talking about this part. So if you sub if we add i to both sides, it becomes two i and this. So pi by four to zero of the natural log of two d theta, right? And so here we get i, which is the integral that we were solving for this, right? This is i, and this is the same thing as this. So i is also equal to this. So now we get i is equal to this integral, um, the integral of pi by four to zero of the natural log of two d theta by two 
And this is a actually pretty simple integral, right? Because just using the power rule, this is going to be ln2 theta from pi by 4 to 0 by 2, which is equal to pi by 4 ln2 minus 0 ln2, which is just 0 by 2. And so we have a final answer of this being equal to pi ln2 by 8. And here we have a final answer. Let's go all the way back up. This definite integral is equal to pi ln2 by 8. So just to recap what we did here, we made a u substitution or a theta substitution here. We got this expression, then we used some more trigonometric properties in King's property to narrow it down. And then we used algebraic manipulation, right, to just break down the logs and then just say, oh, there's an i on both sides. And using that, we get i is equal to pi ln 2 by 8. And that is our final solution.